Martin, we welcome you back once again to Yankees Hot Stove here at the Yogi Berra Museum and Learning Center. Well, the world lost an icon last September when Yogi Berra passed away at the age of 90. His spirit touched so many people, and his spirit lives on through generations of fans that he influenced in a variety of ways. And here at the Yogi Berra Museum and Learning Center, people can come here every day and learn about his remarkable life. The best one I heard is deja vu all over again. I mean, how do you top that one? It's not over until it's over. A bad ball hitter. It ain't bad if you can hit it. Nobody goes there anymore because it's too crowded. It gets late early. I ain't in the slump. I'm just not hitting. He was ordering a standard size pizza, and they asked him if he, how he wanted it sliced, eight slices or four. And he said, you better make it four. I don't think I can eat eight. It is the characters of baseball that endear the sport to its fans, and few combine charisma and talent like Yogi Berra. Although he transcended the sport through his quips and quotes, Yogi's talent on the field matched his wit. Yogi was my hero. I was a catcher, a Yankee fan, and there was number eight, uh, Yogi Berra, pr probably the biggest character in the game at the time, as well as the best clutch hitter. If I had to have one word to describe Yogi, I would use underestimated. His entire life, everybody except those of us who knew him, they all underestimated him. Lawrence Peter Barra was born on May 12, 1925. Hands off Calvin Coolidge held court in the White House, and Walter Johnson and the Washington Senators were baseball's defending world champions. Barra was raised in St. Louis, where a childhood friend thought he looked like an Indian snake charmer, a yogi, and a nickname was born. Baseball came before books in Yogi's childhood. He dropped out of school at age 15 and went to work. In his spare time, he honed his skills as a ball player. Eventually, he and childhood friend Joe Garagiola tried out for their hometown Cardinals. But it was the New York Yankees that stepped to the plate and signed Yogi in 1942. The next year, toiling in the minors, Yogi joined the Navy and the war effort. Yogi enlisted in the Navy and he had no idea what he was getting into. He ultimately uh, was serving on a rocket boat, which was basically a 36-foot boat with a six-man crew that actually was a very big part of the D-Day invasion. After having contributed to the biggest military operation of the 20th century, Barra returned to baseball and established another lasting legacy. 1946 marked Yogi's first season in pinstripes, and in 1949, he became the team's regular catcher. At first, he was much more valuable in the batter's box than behind it. Yogi went up there to hit the ball. He didn't necessarily look for a real good pitch, and so it made it hard to pitch to him. You're a pitcher, you think, Boy, I'd rather pitch to Yogi than Manna, not me. Yogi, I fear. Yogi's greatest asset was deliver under pressure. Barra connects and the ball goes high and far over the right field wall. Yogi has hit the fifth grand slammer in World Series annals. For over a decade, Barra delivered the fulcrum between two Yankee dynasties. He earned American League MVP honors in 1951, 54, and 55. He was a 15-time All-Star, and his 10 World Series rings more than any other player in baseball history. As Barra matured as a catcher, he redefined the position, mastering the art of calling pitches and handling pitchers. And in no game was that more evident than in Game 5 of the 1956 World Series. Don Larson was on the mound. Yogi behind the plate. Larson looks in. Here comes the pitch. Strike three. A no-hitter. A perfect game for John Larson. The sheer joy of, uh, it looks like a little boy meeting his father after a long trip, uh, just jumping into Larson's arms. It wasn't so much that he was a big part of it, but it was the fact that the Yankees won and it was historic, and he did indeed have a, have a part in it. In 1964, after 18 seasons, his playing career winding down, Barra was hired as Yankees manager, and his golden touch continued. The Yankees won the pennant, but lost to the Cardinals in the Fall Classic. That loss cost Yogi his job. 
But the Crosstown Mets, exhibiting a flair for PR, signed him as a player coach for the next season. Ultimately, Barra managed the Mets from 1972 to 75, leading the charismatic You Gotta Believe gang to a World Series appearance along the way. Mr. Barra, would you object to Mr. Trio being in our bullpen? I don't care. As long as the fight starts, he stays there. Well, he's too far. <laughs> But as Barra might say, his Yankee career wasn't over till it was over. In 1984, the Hall of Fame catcher returned to manage in the Bronx. But it didn't last long. Yogi was unceremoniously replaced by Billy Martin the next season. It was a bitter moment for Yogi, and he began a 14-year self-imposed exile from the Yankee family. Finally, in 1999, Yogi and George Steinbrenner reconciled their differences. There was George, and he came in, and George and Yogi talked, and then we went on live on the radio. And I remember calling George after the radio show, and he just said to me, this is a great day for the New York Yankees. After his reunion with the Yankees, Yogi served as an ambassador for the team he loved. He was honored as a member of baseball's all-century team. But his true joy came in his frequent visits to spring training and to Yankee Stadium. He became a constant presence around the team's continued success. It was just a wonderful feeling to see Dad be able to step back into Yankee Stadium again because really it's his home. For Yogi Berra, it was a remarkable life. Remembered for his outstanding career, his generous spirit, and of course, his memorable quotations. So whatever Yogi wanted to do, Yogi could do. He's a beautiful guy. We should all be so lucky to have a Yogi Bear in our life.